Anti-corruption campaigners in Malawi say the dismissal of a corruption case involving Malawi's Vice President Solos Chilema on Monday undermines the country's efforts to curb fraud and mismanagement. Government officials said the move is constitutional, but critics view it as a clear example of selective justice favoring the elite. Lamek Masina reports from Blantyre. Malawi's Vice President Saulus Chirima was arrested in November of 2022 after being named among 84 individuals suspected to have received bribes from a UK-based businessman, Zuneh Satam. Malawi's Anti-Corruption Bureau accused Chirima of receiving kickbacks from Satam in exchange for government contracts. However, early this month, Director of Public Prosecutions, Masao Kochankakara, filed a notice to the High Court to drop the case in which Chirima had not taken a plea after 18 months. An order from High Court Judge Redson Kapindu issued Monday says all the charges Chirima was answering to in connection to the case have been dropped. Moses Nkandawile is the chairperson for the National Alliance Against Corruption. He told VOA that the Malawi government should have let the case proceed in court if it wants to be taken seriously in its effort to curb corruption. If somebody has offended, violated, abused a particular law, it's extremely important that he, that person has to be brought before uh, the courts of law. Uh, because otherwise, we are just paying lip service uh, to the fight against corruption. Kandawile says it's unfortunate that Malawi's fight against corruption continues to favor high-profile individuals despite commitments by President Lazarus Chakwera to fight corruption without fear or favor. In May of last year, the DPP dropped a corruption case against the former President Tibagiri Mulozi, who was accused of diverting $11 million donation to his personal bank account while in office between 1994 and 2004. This came a month after President Chakwera pardoned the former Minister of Homeland Security, Uladi Musa, as an act of mercy during Easter. Musa was jailed in 2020 for corruption and placed on a U.S. travel ban. In July of last year, Chakwera also pardoned the country's former Minister of Information, Henry Musa, on poor health grounds. He was serving a nine-year jail term after being convicted of conspiracy to steal government property. George Peary is a former lecturer of political science at the University of Livingstonia. He says dropping a case against Chirima is detrimental to the fight against corruption. Discontinuing a high-profile case, forgiving people whom the court has justified that they were guilty of offense, I think that does not send a good message in the fight against corruption in Malawi. Malawian government authorities say dropping court cases is constitutional because the country's laws give the director of public prosecutions the power to discontinue any case. Reacting to the development, members of the United Transformation Movement Party of Chirima on Tuesday took to the streets of the capital Lilongwe to celebrate the discontinuation of the case. Lamek Masina, VOA News. Britain's King Charles III and Queen Camilla on Tuesday sent a message of comfort and sympathy to Kenya's President William Ruto amid the ongoing floods across the country. In his message, the monarch called for global efforts to combat and adapt to climate change as the, he expressed sadness at the rise in death and disruption of livelihoods. He stressed the need for the country to adopt strategies to migrate the adverse effects of climate change as agreed between the two nations during King visit last year. Mr. President, it was with great concern that my wife and I learned recently of the terrible flooding that has ravaged Kenya and the region and which continues to impact so many of your people. We can only begin to imagine the anguish of those who have lost loved ones and seen their livelihoods devastated. His statement read in part. 
The monarch made a state visit to Kenya in October last year and was hosted by President William Ruto. As we discussed during our visit to Kenya last year, the challenge of climate change and biodiversity loss falls to all of us to address at stake in our very quality of life and survival as a world. Remembering with great fondness the welcome we received on my visit last year and the friendship between our two countries, we wanted to send our deepest sympathy and affection to people of Kenya, he said. At least eight people have died in the last 24 hours following heavy rain and flooding in many parts of the country, bringing the death toll to 238. An update on Tuesday from Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindiki's Interior Ministry added that a total of 174 people had been wounded, 75 were missing, and 47,000 families or 235,000 people had been displaced. Kindiki also reported that 167 camps had been set up in 22 counties, housing 74,451 people. He added that some 286,011 people had been affected by the heavy rains. Transport, housing, education, health, and agriculture are the most affected sectors. He said, adding that about 1,967 were grappling with various losses. Yes. 